Hello and welcome to today's video on BMC Helix Remedy Force YouTube channel. Today we're going to see how to configure ADFS single sign on on Salesforce. First, this is the list of requisites you need. You need a Microsoft Windows Server 2008 R2 or above with Microsoft Active Directory installed and Microsoft Active Directory Federation Services 2.0. Federation Services 1.0, it's no longer supported. From the Salesforce or Remedy4 side, any Salesforce version and or or it's fully compatible and ready to be configured. Okay, so let's start with the Windows Server part. Please log into your Windows Server and open the ADFS Management Console. Go to Service, Endpoints, and scroll down to Metadata, and look for Federation Metadata XML. We need to download this XML. This contains information we will need later. Open a browser window on Chrome or Firefox, and paste the XML location with your domain or local host as the following. The XML will be located at your downloads folder. Open the XML file and copy identity ID URL. Save this in a TXT file on your local computer. Go back to ADFS Management Console, go to Certificates, and look for a token sign in certificate. If you already have a valid certificate, you can use one of them. If you would like to use a new certificate, you can create it here or ask your Windows administrator to do it. Double click on your certificate details and then copy the file. Select a name for this certificate. and download it to your local computer. So now let's go and start the configuration at Remedy Force. In order to start using SSO, we need to configure first the Salesforce My Domain, which will replace our current Oryx domain. Go to Setup, and on the Quick Find type My Domain. Follow the steps to create your domain. I already did this, so I will skip this part. Go now to Certificate and Key Management. And create a new cell sign certificate. Again, if you still have a valid one, you can use it as well. Let's proceed now with the SSO configuration. On the quick find, type single sign on and click on single sign on settings. Then click on new. First, choose a name for your single sign on. And let's start filling all these required fields. On the issuer, paste the identity ID we copied from the metadata downloaded from the server. On entity ID, paste the my domain URL we created earlier. Moving forward, on identity provider certificate, upload the certificate we downloaded from Windows Server. Next one. Request sign in certificate. Choose the certificate we created at Salesforce Certificate and Key Management. On SAML identity type, choose assertion contains a federation ID from the user object. This will help us to match a user from Salesforce in Active Directory. Then, service provider initiated request binding. 
choose HTTP redirect. And finally, the identity provider URL, it's the only one from the, from the rest of the fields that it's required. We need to paste here the ADFS login URL. This is a standard URL on all ADFS. So I'm gonna leave you on the description below the format so you can create your own uh, login URL. So you just copy that URL and just paste it over here. On my side, this is my current URL, so I will use this one. You just need to replace the domain one. Click Save, and the results should be something like this. Now let's finish the process by letting Windows Server know to trust on this connection. Click on Download Metadata, and that will download an XML file. Upload this file to your Windows Server. Go back to the ADFS Management Console and go to Trust Relationships. Then Relay and Party Trust. Right click and add a Relay Party Trust. Select Import Data from a file and select the metadata we uploaded from Salesforce. Click on Next and choose a name for the Relay Party Trust. Click Next again, and do not allow multi-factor authentication. Also, permit for all users and click on Next, Next, and Finish. At this point, I got this error message, but this is because I already created one. Go to your, your Relay Party Trust you just created and click on Edit Claim Rules. As you can see, I already have a claim rule here. This is because I already did this process, but we need to create a new rule. So click on Add New Rule and select Send LDAP Attribute as Claims. Next. From here, choose User Principal Name on the LDAP Attribute and Name ID on an outgoing claim type. The result is something like this. So with this, I am comparing the user principal name with the federation ID. Finally, let's test this with the, my user account. So I'll go back to the at remedy force and look for a test user, or in this case, I'm going to look for my user account. Open the test user record and click on edit. Since I'm using user principal name, I know that that is my login name on my server or on my Active Directory. So I'm going to paste that exact name into the Federation ID. Make sure Federation ID matches the LDAP attribute you selected. This is case sensitive, so be careful with low caps. Click Save. and then go back to my domain section. On authentication configuration, click on edit. Select the SSL configuration we created. Click save. Grab your my domain URL and open a private browser window tab. Now paste it and let's browse into that URL. As you can see, now I can log in from the standard Salesforce page or we can use the remedy 4 cadfs which is the name of the single sign-on settings I created. So let's choose remedy 4 cadfs If you notice, I got this error message due to my Windows Server is a testing environment. And I don't have any SSL certificate installed on it, any commercial one at least. So this is totally expected. I'm going to use now my Active Directory credentials here. And as you can see, it's the same one as if I'm at Asthma Federation ID.
now getting directed to Remedy Force, and this means the process has been complete and my single sign-on is working correctly. Keep in mind that in order to deploy this to all your users, you need to populate your Federation ID from Active Directory into the user record in Salesforce. Also, be careful with the certificate and state or expiration date. When a certificate expires, the single sign-on stops working. So you need to plan your renew your certificates before the, cer the certificate end date. Okay, that's all for today's video. Please subscribe to your YouTube channel. And if you need anything else, you can contact Remedy for support. Thank you.